You might be wondering what day it is. It's Christmas Day. I have memories of my children and before them, my brothers and sisters coming in and saying, it's Christmas, Santa came. Well, like Ebenezer Scrooge, it's Christmas Day, you haven't missed it. And we're glad that you've joined us this week for our Christmas Day service. We welcome you. The bulletin says the Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. That's a lot of truth in one statement. It's wonderful to be called together. It's wonderful to be the people of God. And it's wonderful to be led and directed by the Holy Spirit. So we pray that for this service and for your family on Christmas Day. Please say our greeting with me as we start our service. It doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done, how you love, or who you love. God welcomes you, and so do we. You are welcome here.
who come to earth bearing the news of the Christ child's birth. Who are these shepherds who run to see and worship the babe on bended knee? Who is this child so small, so slight, of whom the angels sang that night? Who is this king, a manger in his throne, who humbles himself to make us his own? Who is this God who sends a son into our midst, the promised one. Go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountains that Jesus is born, while shepherds kept their watching o'er silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountains. That Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds fear and tremble when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell us on the mountains, over the hills, and everywhere. Go. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lowly manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation as blessed Christmas born. Go tell it on the mountains. The first reading from Luke chapter 2, 8 through 14. Who are these angels who come to earth? In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, 
do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you great new, good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. these shepherds who run to see? The second reading comes from Luke chapter 2, 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, 
just as they had been told to them. this child so small so slight Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 through 4 long ago God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things through whom he also created the worlds he is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made the purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. a manger, his throne. The fourth reading is from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. You have multiplied exultation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. 
for all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Great will be his authority, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. this God who sends a son. The fifth reading is taken from John chapter 1 verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, 
who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were, not, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of the world, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Good morning, saints. Good. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's a wonderful day. We have everybody here this morning, and it's so great to have the choir behind me because this is great. I need y'all energy. I really do. I really do. That is great. I'm going to give us our, um, our sacred text, which is taken out of the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that God gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Amen. Amen. You know, during our cantata, everybody got to tell their Christmas story. Well, a lot of people got to tell this, but I didn't get to tell mine. So I'm going to go ahead and give you all that right now. I grew up in a house with nine children. I am the middle child. I got four in front of me and four behind me. And Christmas in the Burt House was an unbelievable situation. There were so many kids running around. There were so many gifts. The, the presents came out from under the tree into the middle of the, the, dine, the living room. And there was so much activity. We used to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and our parents went to bed at 4.30. So, <laughs> and they would, we would go in there and we would wake them up and say, Santa Claus has been here, Santa Claus has been here. And they, my mom, I remember her telling us, she was like, oh my gosh, I just went to sleep. Why can't y'all sleep till eight? But we never did. We never did. And we would get up and we would get there and we're ripping open presents and, and we're screaming and hollering and everything and it was a wonderful thing. Later on that day after breakfast, we waited for my grandmother to come over. And she came over every single Christmas morning. And seeing her was the thing that we looked forward to the most. Because grandma would come in, she would see everything that we got for Christmas and everything. And, and even though she had been with my mom half the time, shopping for it anyway, so she knew what we had. But she acted like it was the first time she ever seen it and everything, and she would come in, and she would give each and every one of us a card. Inside the card was a crisp $5 bill. We thought that that was the best gift we have ever had in our life. And my mom was standing there, and she was like, I don't understand. I spent thousands of dollars for all of this. And y'all were so excited over that $5 bill because that was all my grandmother had. That was all she had to give us. And she gave us so much love and so much attention that it didn't matter. We wanted that $5. Because back in the early 70s, $5 to a kid was a lot of money. <laughs> it was a lot of money. But it was just the symbolism of it that that's what Christmas was about, love. It was about love. Pray with me just for a second. Most gracious God, we thank you so much for bringing us here this morning on this glorious, beautiful day. We thank you for all the blessings you have given us this year, and we look forward to a new year of new challenges, new opportunities, new expectations, Lord, and we look forward to spending that year with you. These blessings, Lord, and all other blessings we ask in Jesus' most precious name, amen. Amen. Today's sermon is entitled, The Real Gift. Most of us feel that when a baby is born, it's the most wonderful time in a person's life. The future is full of wonder and surprise. From day one, we look back and we look forward into the future to see what was going to happen. The child's first steps, the first smile, the first words that they would speak, would it be mama and daddy? Or in this world, mama and mama? The house 
would be full of laughter, even when we, the child was doing something they shouldn't be doing. Children are living examples of Advent. They bring hope, peace, joy, and much love to our lives. Mary and Joseph felt the same thing that we feel. They knew that they were giving birth to the Messiah, but on that beautiful day, this was their baby, their little baby, a gift to the world from God above. You see, God took every speck of love and molded it into love and then put that into a child, and that child was named Jesus. Place that child here on earth with us, for us. Every parent feels this way, that our love came together and created another human being that would change the world. All of us are miracles of life. Mary and Joseph looked at their baby and knew 100% that this baby would change life as we know it. Nothing would ever be the same. Their baby's name would be spoken until the end of all life and time. This baby was born to show us how to love because we got it wrong. We didn't know how to love each other because we didn't know how to love ourselves. And we needed someone to show us how it is done. The real gift that God has given to us is love. Love for ourselves, love for our families, love for our friends, love for our church and our ministry here, and our community. Love for the air we breathe, the food we eat, the place we live, the clothes on our back. God gave us the ability to fully love with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our spirit. God's love is so powerful, we can even love those who hate us. Jesus showed us that as he hung from the cross. But the gift was given to us first, to love ourselves, to take care of ourselves, to feed our spirit, and to give that love to everyone around us. Allow God to come into your heart and transform you from within. Let God complete you and increase your faith. Let God fill your, your heart with peace, give you hope for tomorrow. Let joy drip from your fingertips and true happiness take over your life. When people look at you, they should see the love of God. But be the husband or wife you always wanted. Be the friend you always prayed for. Dance like David danced. Have faith like Job. Have the determination of Noah. The obedience of Abraham and the love of Jesus. We were given the blueprint and Jesus lived every single word. Give this gift that God has given to us. And do, it's nothing, we have nothing to lose and we have everything to gain. You can't return it. It is tailor-made for us. This gift was given to us on the day we were conceived. Don't just carry it around. Use it. God didn't just do this one time. God did the same thing over and over from every angel in heaven to everything that crawls to on the ground, from every raindrop that falls to every single grain of sand on the beach. Everything that God touches is made of pure love. Receive this gift. And don't keep it to yourself. Share it with everyone you come in contact with. Give it all away. We were designed for that. May this be the most wonderful Christmas ever this year. Keep growing, keep believing, and keep loving. 
Merry Christmas, and have a very happy new year. Thank you. Amen. of our world. Fill our hearts with joy and angels at their You come from heaven above to the lowest of human conditions. Watch over those in need, the sick, the hungry, the grieving. You come from heaven above to walk with us and share in our lives. Guide us to follow your path of justice, mercy, you come from heaven above to become flesh and live among us. May we see your glory, full of grace and truth. Amen. Amen. Good morning and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm here to thank you for your generosity throughout 2022. It's been wonderful. We've managed to keep the ministries going, the church warm, cool, depending on the weather. Everything ticking along nicely. I'm just asking that maybe for one of your New Year's resolutions, you will consider adding time, talents, and tithes to MCC Richmond as one of your goals. Also, a couple of things that are painless is connecting us to your Kroger card and to your Amazon Smile account. That way, every time you spend money, we get a little portion of it, and we can certainly use it. But thank you again for your generosity, and let's make 2023 even better. Thank you.
as we come to the holy meal, the center of this, our worship, let us remember that Jesus is the host of this meal, and Jesus turns no one away. Come now, just as you are, and experience this sacred time with God. Let us observe a moment of reflection as we silently confess our concerns and shortcomings to God before we are fed this holy meal. Let us say together, loving and gracious God, forgive these things that we have done and left undone that may cause pain to you, others, and ourselves. Help us to learn from these things and remind us of your forgiving presence and transforming love. Blessed of God, through the life and ministry of Jesus, God forgives us, heals us, and showers us with gifts of love, hope, and grace, just the way we are, and welcomes us to this feast of victory and life together. Let us remember God's transforming gift of love and life and love. We remember Jesus' promise to his disciples long ago and to us that we always be with us. We remember how on the night before his betrayal, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We remember how after supper, Jesus took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my love poured out for you and for everyone. Whoever drinks it, do this in remembrance of me. By the love and grace of God, may this bread and cup be the body and love of Jesus for us and with us. In preparation for sharing this meal in mystery, let us say together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Creator, who art in God, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us partake of God's gifts of forgiveness, love, and grace. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. We thank you for this beautiful, beautiful day that you have given us. We thank you for the hope, the joy, the peace that you have given us throughout this year, Lord. Help us to take all of these things we've learned in Advent and take that to our new world, to our new life, to our new year. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Christmas, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Merry Christmas!